Today we will perform sub modeling which is commonly known as global local analysis using hypermesh and optistruct This type of analysis is commonly implemented when we are dealing with large geometries to reduce the overall solving time and get accurate results at particular locations in the global model We will perform global local analysis on a sheet metal hanger assembly with weldments The main objective is to accurately visualize the stress patterns along the edges in the mount component Let's take a look at how this global local analysis can be set up. The submodeling process mainly involves extracting resultant forces from specific nodal locations in the global model. These forces are then applied to a local model with or without mesh refinement to get accurate results in the area of interest. To start with, we will set up a global linear static analysis which will include all the components in the assembly to reduce the overall solving time we will use a coarse mesh to run this analysis after the geometry is imported into hypermesh we can see three different components the mount pipe and the bracket let's start by creating a new material provide a name to it we will enter the default mechanical properties for steel This material will be assigned to all the components. Now create a new property and give a name to it. With card image as P shell, select the steel material in material selection box. Now enter value of thickness T as 2.5 mm. Let's duplicate this property for a different thickness value. Change the value of T to 5 mm. Assign the 2.5 thickness property to mount and pipe components. The material will get updated automatically. For the bracket component, assign the 5 mm thickness property. Open the AutoMesh tab from 2D panel. Select all the surfaces in the model in entity selection box. Let's use element size value as 8. With all other settings as default, create the mesh. Press Shift F3 to open the edges panel. Switch the drop down to elements and select all the elements in the model. We will use tolerance value of 0.1. Now preview equivalence to view the duplicate nodes. Equivalence to connect the components to each other. Let's create a new component to store RBE2 rigid elements. Open the rigid tab from 1D panel. Switch dependent nodes to multiple nodes and select nodes option from the drop down. Set independent node to calculate node. We will use the by geometry selection criteria to select all the nodes on the edge of the hole. Create the rigid element. We will also create a rigid for the lower hole. Let's repeat the same steps for the second bolt location. Now create a new load collector to store single point constraints. Open the constraints tab from analysis panel. Select the master nodes of upper rigid elements in selection box. With all six degrees of freedom checked, create the constraints. Create another load collector to store applied force. Now open the forces tab from analysis panel. Set the radio button to create and selection box to nodes. Now select the master node of lower rigid element. We will apply a force of magnitude thousand newton. along negative y direction 
क्रिएट द फोर्स टू कंबाइन द फोर्सेस एंड कंस्ट्रेंट्स क्रिएट अ न्यू लोड स्टेप प्रोवाइड अ नेम टू इट सेट द एनालिसिस टाइप एज लीनियर स्टैटिक Now select the SPC and force load collectors in the respective selection boxes. Now we will add control cards to the analysis setup. Click on global output request and return. Similarly, add the output card to the model. We will also add the parameter card. In the global output request card, check the box next to displacement. We will also output the grid point forces and SPC forces using appropriate options. Lastly, Check the box next to stress to output stress results. In the output card, change the number of outputs to 3. For output 1, select keyword as H3D. For output 2, select HM. Lastly, for output 3, select OP2. In the param card we will change the auto spc setting to no For inertia relief calculation change the in rel value to minus 2 To output the results for local modeling change the post setting to minus 1 The analysis setup is now complete. Let's save the model in a separate folder. Make sure to use underscore in place of space while entering all file names to avoid any errors during the analysis run. Open the Optistruct tab from Analysis panel. Set export options to all and run options to Analysis. Click on Optistruct to launch the solver. Let's view the results using Hyperview. Select the H3D file from working directory. Apply the results. Now open the contours tab and apply the displacement results. Change result type to element stresses and set averaging method to simple. Select the holder component and click on apply to view the component specific results. We can change the numeric format of the legend as desired. We have successfully run the global analysis and viewed the stress results. In the next step, we will extract resultant forces from this global analysis and run a local analysis. This will help us achieve similar stress results on the mount component but with greatly reduced solving time. Let's take a look at how this is done. We will first save a copy of the global model in a separate folder. This same model will be edited to convert it to a local or sub model. Let's delete the pipe and bracket components as we are only interested in analysis of the mount. Open the delete panel by pressing F2 and delete the extra RBE2 element. Now we will also delete the force load collector. Let's create a new element set. Provide a name to it.
We will select all the visible elements and add them to this set. Create another set and give a name to it. Change the card image to none. Set the entity selection box to nodes. Select the master nodes of both rigid elements. Now we will use the by geometry selection criteria to select all the nodes along weld edges. Add the nodes to the set. We will now extract the resultant forces acting on these nodes from the global model. Go to Post, Free Body, Force. Select the OP2 output file from global folder. Select the subcase 1. Now we will select the element set which we created in the previous step. We can change the color of the load collectors as desired. Uncheck create csv file and accept. A summary table of the resultant forces extracted from the global model is now visible. Close the table. We can now visualize the forces and moments acting at specific grid locations in the model. A list of new load collectors has also been automatically created. Let's update the load step. Select the load collector with card image load add. The local submodel is ready for run. Save the file. Run the analysis using Optistruct tab from analysis panel. Let's view the results in Hyperview. We will visualize the results of the local model alongside the global model to compare them. By using the load results option, load the H3D file from local folder. Let's apply the element stresses results with averaging method as simple. As you can see, the results are exactly similar to that of the global model. The local run is complete, but the stress results are not accurate as we are still using a coarse mesh. To accurately visualize the stress concentration along the edges, we need to use a finer mesh with a smaller element size. We will now refine the local model mesh and rerun the analysis to view the changes in the stress results. Let's save a copy of the local model in a separate folder. We will now create a finer mesh to accurately capture the stress concentration along whole edges. To view the geometry and mesh properly, hide all the load collectors using model browser. Now create a new component. We will create the finer mesh in this component. Open the auto mesh tab from 2D panel. Switch the selection box to elements. Now select all the visible elements. We will deselect the rigid elements as they are not two dimensional elements. Let's use element size as 2. Toggle to elements to current component. We will use anchor nodes to preserve specific grid point locations at which forces have been already applied. Using the by sets selection criteria, select the previously created node set.
deselect the rigid master nodes. Now create the mesh. We will reduce the node density along weld edges. We have extracted the forces at specific nodal locations from the weld edges. If the remeshed component has high node density along the same edge, the forces will be treated as single point forces and we will see high stress concentration at these locations. To distribute the force equally, we must use a lower value of node density along these edges. This will create a gradual decrease in element size from weld edges to the center of the component. Open the Numbers tab from Tools panel. Select the master node of both the rigids and switch on ID display. Let's create a separate component to store new rigid elements. Open the Rigids tab. Now set the independent node to select node. Enter the ID of the first master node. It will be highlighted. Let's use the bypath selection criteria to select all the nodes along the edge of the hole. Create the RBE2 element. We will repeat the same steps for second location. Enter the ID of the second master node. Select all the nodes along the edge and create the rigid element. Now we can delete the mount and rigids component as new components have been created to replace them. We can also delete the element set as it is no longer required. Now assign the 2.5 mm thickness property to the new mount component. Save the model. The setup is complete and we can now run the analysis from Optistruct tab in Analysis panel. Let's view the remeshed local model results in Hyperview and compare them with the coarse mesh model. Load the H3D file from working directory. Using the predefined views, let's align these two windows. Now we will sync the two windows with each other. Apply the stress results on the remeshed model. We can clearly see the stress concentration pattern along the edges of the hole. The stress contours are now visible more accurately than the coarse meshed analysis. We have successfully extracted local results from a large global model and visualized the stress plots with a refined mesh to accurately view the stress concentration regions. And this is how we can perform submodeling or global local analysis using Hypermesh and Optistruct. If you like this video, please hit the red subscribe button and give a thumbs up, it helps a lot. Make sure to follow me on social media to stay updated about latest video content. Thanks for watching.